What's going on? First things first, I'm gonna hold the camera up here like a normal human being because I was so used to filming TikToks when I posted the last video that the whole video was filmed from like down here. So my apologies. It's a new day. Um, I am pretty keen to film more YouTube videos, so enjoy. Um, again, I won't be as close as I was last time, but this time I don't have heaps of fun stuff to do. But today, what we're doing is, got it up in the air. First things first, I gotta clean up my mess. Um, and then I'm gonna get my way through mounting this motor finally. We had a bit of a chat and had a look at the rear end and just wanted to make sure that once it gets a, you know, a solid rear end, I can actually have this car low enough that when I pop tires, um, it won't be stuck on the ground sort of thing. So that was something to think about that I didn't think about initially, but what can you do? So we've talked that one through, got it up in the air, just double checked that I don't know, I'm not gonna have to do a whole tunnel and stuff and it doesn't look like I am, which is awesome. I won't be cutting the rear end out of it, pulling the rear subframe, I guess you call it, out of it for a while till I get a diff and a four link and brackets and that sort of stuff. But it will be getting a full rear end. Like I said, first things first, I'll have a bit of a clean up and then I'll get back to you. Alrighty, now that I've got my shit somewhat together, um, I'll get this thing back down on the ground while I was cleaning. I also remembered I need to make the front plates and um, at least tie this in. So shouldn't be too long. Like I said, I'll come back to it when I got some fresh eyes. Now that I do, um, it should be a lot more straightforward. So first things first, um, I pulled the front side of those brackets off, marked them or whatever, um, and I know how I'm gonna locate them. I'm just gonna do one bolt, it's gonna be fine. I'll do it in the middle where I can weld the tube over it. Um, so I also seen this, I think I said in the end of the last video, I seen this, which is pretty well perfect. Um, so I'll make a couple of these quickly. So got two of those cut out. They're slightly bigger than this, but the bits that I made were slightly smaller than rail anyway. So basically do the same thing, mark the same holes. That's the most important bit. Um, so I've got one for each side. And then after I've done that, I'll go dead center, mark a big hole in the center, put like a pretty big bolt, like a 10, M10 or something through it. So I've got these two marked up. Um, I'll just find a center punch and then center punch the centers and these two holes, drill them out and then I shall return. I once again cannot find the center punch. So I did my best at just drilling it and it worked. So um, I'll clean up all the rest of the welds on these, they sit flat and then what I'll do is I'll just drill that center hole straight through. Um, so this is all unbolted. Here's my super cool locators in action. Hopefully this doesn't spring up and do some horrific damage. Oop. There we go. All right. It's pretty snug, but it works. So that's cool. There's something inside it too, which is great. And while I'm at it, um, I can I can bend this back because this is not actually that strong. So um, if I get two bits of wood, I'm thinking on e either end like this, and carefully stand in the middle of it and stand on it just enough that it I don't know. I'll keep going, but I reckon I can get this pretty good. So that's better. Nothing's super mangled looking, but that's a lot closer to being straight. So even though I didn't use a center punch, they still line up pretty good. Um, to get them a bit nicer, what I will do is once it's all sort of done, um, or getting closer, I'll sort of just square them up side to side. So it doesn't matter if they're not perfectly the same as I decided, I'd rather them look right and like they made up nicely, but they're not too far off. So what I'll do now is I've got this bit of tube that's marked the right length. I know real ghetto, so I'll at least go find the other tube um, and then use the drop saw so I can get a nice square edge on it, cut two of these out. Alrighty, so those holes are drilled out. Basically, all I'm gonna do is quickly get these bolts in there so they're nice and snug, they'll locate it. Um, this worked really well for up the top there, um, except opposite, I've got one bolt up there, two locators, down here I've got one locator, two bolts, but once it's all tied together, it won't really matter a whole lot. So, because the pipe's gonna be a fair bit bigger diameter, I'll see if I can just kill the lens on this camera and get a big tack on there. It's galvanized, that's awesome. But get them on there, do the same on the other side. So got these two bits made up and they'll cut on the drop saw, so they should be pretty square. Um, so now I've got to tack these on, but before I even do that, I might bolt the rad support back on because um, what I'm going to have to do is section out a little bit of this to um, for the, for the upright things to go through so I can really tie it in and um, yeah, it's probably overkill, but the radiator is going to be pretty much as, right at, as wide as this opening here already. So if this is here, they're three quarter, you know, they're going to be in this a little bit. So I'll do it properly, do it really nice and I'll, I'll notch these out for that. 
I'm sitting here editing this. Um, and I'm just going to interject here real quick. I'll be like two seconds. Um, I just want to say I'm not a fucking actor. So if I don't sound super impressed when I'm doing something or if I'm a bit blah, whatever, I'm not, I'm not going to put on a, I'm not going to pretend. So that's probably why it's going to be a bit slow and a bit boring. I'm not going to make it more exciting than it needs to be. I just, just thought I'd, I'd give my two cents right now, but enjoy. Um, basically what I'll do is I'll notch as much of it as I can out of the bandsaw and then I'll probably get the finger file in there to round it off. Um, and what I'll do is I'll just copy this for the other side and make the uprights on the other side suit rather than trying to make another one separate for the other side so at least I can get it a lot closer and truer. I've done the majority of what I need to to notch this out. Um, and I'll just make sure he fits and all that. So get him on there. Um, yeah, they're in the right spot sort of thing. So I need to make them a little bit bigger, a bit more round, but... It's pretty good straight away actually. So, cause when I tacked all these uprights on, they were all just sort of all over the place. Um, I'd rather square this up to the car and if I can get a little bit more room at the side, it's not gonna be a bad thing. So um, you can see maybe, yeah. See there's a fair bit of gap the whole way through. Um, the inner ones are wrong cause they're obviously different angles here too. So what I'll do is um, I'll just cut the tacks off at the top. They're really terrible tacks anyway get them the right height, get them all that sort of thing here, and then, you know, I'll get them up the top where they need to be, make sure the headlights still fit and all that sort of thing. Um, but I'd rather them be a bit further out than the actual rails, so I'm not crammed, like trying to, once I add a gusset panel and stuff down here, I'm not crammed trying to jam a radiator in this. I've got both sides tacked on now. Um, I did some measurements and this side is like, probably maybe two centimeters lower than this side is from there, but this side is also physically a little bit lower from the frame rail too. So I knew that this was not perfect, but um, I set a headlight in here to try and check. I might have to put the other garden headlight on and bumper and all that sort of stuff just to work out where it's out. Um, I'm pretty sure I've just tacked this on like sloping down ever so slightly as well compared to the other side. Looks like it has a bit of a lift on it sort of thing. Um, but I'll do some more measurements and see if I can split the difference somewhere or work out what is actually wrong. Like I said, the front of this car was out from when I got it, so it was never gonna be perfect, but I would like to get this as close as I can at least. Alrighty, so I got the front end back on, uh, made a couple measurements. I think one guard mount is out a little, one headlight mount rather, is a little bit too far out on the passenger side, but that's not the end of the world, so at least I discovered that. Um, everything else is pretty good, um, and I think what I'll do is I'll just sort of rob Peter to pay Paul, move this one up a little bit, move this one down a little bit. Once I have plates on here for the other forwardmost section, like the bash bar, um, you're honestly not going to notice and like I've said a million times the whole car was out to begin with so um, I'm going to go out and get some lunch and then I shall return and continue. So after heaps of measuring and tweaking and all that sort of thing and fucking getting the shits with it because it's not quite right um, I split the difference. Uh, it took a bit longer than I wanted it to like a few hours sort of thing but these are within 5 mil um, there side to side which is I think pretty acceptable. Um, I measured some other stuff while I was doing it as well, like the distance between the guards, the distance between the headlight mounts. The headlight mounts are 100% spot on. The bumper mounts I knew were a little bit off, but I can tweak those off to cut those and move those around a little bit. Um, but yeah, at the moment, the bonnet is probably a little bit too wide at the front. So obviously measuring off other cars because I don't have a bonnet to put on this one currently. Um, and nor am I gonna take a bonnet off the other car to put on this one, um, that can come later. But um, everything's pretty close. I've got all the measurements that I need to. So now what I'm going to do is grab the radiator that's sitting here. It's too wide, but the radiator I'm going to get is going to be the same height um, as this one. So I'll at least do that, get the height right, maybe make some bars for across the bottom sort of thing. So I can at least just call this front section structurally done sort of thing. So I don't have to worry about this. And then I can finally move on to all the other shit I've been wanting to do. So this one is... It'll never focus on my face while the light's behind me. Um, this one is 48 centimeters overall tall. Um, the filler doesn't matter because we'll relocate that. Dad can tick pretty well, so that's totally fine. Um, where I did mark and cut these two before hasn't changed enough that I need to do anything, but um, I didn't think about when I cut them that I should have left it a bit over because I'm going to go tube across. Um, so what I'll need to do is go tube underneath across because um, this is pretty snug like that's it at the moment basically like it'll be a really good fit up here i'll have the tiniest bit side to side 
um, which once I've added the gussets and stuff will be really snug. I do want it to be as nice as I can get it sort of thing. Um, so that's that's all fine. At least this has all worked out pretty well. Um, but yeah, so what I'll do is... Um, I'll have to think about it. So I'll have a bit of a think about how I'm going to attach those and make it nice, even though, again, it's something you're never going to see. Um, but yeah, I'll be back. It'll be two seconds by the time I've thought about it in the video. Forgot to record for a little bit. Um, instead of making the bottom bit here, because I can't come up with a good way of doing it right now, I made um, these ugly little things in here. They're just like little triangle pieces to fill in the hole in the frame rail. Welded them in, filled up a fair bit of weld, because you're not going to be able to see it. Oh, maybe on this side. There's a slight rise in the, the body. I'll just sort of blend it in. Um, I'm definitely going to have to lose those uh, what do you call them, beads that I've rolled at the back and the front and I'll just match it on this side sort of thing um, rather than have one side with them and one side without. But now that they're in, um, I can finally cut some RHS to reinforce this part of the frame rail and then finally mount, mount the um, tube motor, which I've been saying I'm going to do for like the last three weeks. Like that was a one of the first things I was going to do, but now I can do it. Um, the motor's all good where it is too, so I don't need to change the angle of it or whatever um, to make the rear end happy. Like the wheels that it's sitting on at the moment are 16s. And to be completely honest, if there was no tires on them, it'd already be like clouting into the ground. So realistically where the diff is at the moment with a solid rear end would probably be about right. Like close enough that I'm not gonna have to mess around with the motor. Worst case scenario, I'll have to raise the gearbox a little bit. So um, I'll cut some RHS now, clean this up a little bit. So I ran out of gas for the MIG because um, I was doing some super questionable amounts of welding, um, but I forgot to film making those plates. They're a bit of a pain in the ass to make, but basically I cut a bit of the RHS diagonally in two and then more or less made it fit as well as it could. Um, this side's probably better to show. This is why I say questionable, so disregard the amount of weld there, but essentially, and the quality of weld, um, essentially it's just like a copy of that shape sort of thing. I got the angle, like the forward slope and the, the inward sort of slope the same on both sides, even though the rails are physically different side to side. Um, factory, I will say again, but um, the gap outside of that between, I guess, where the tub is and the like motor mount sort of section that I just added, I just filled with weld. Um, if there's a right and a wrong way to do something, I've probably most likely done it the wrong way, um, but that's fine. It works. It'll add a lot more strength than what was there anyway, even if a weld isn't necessarily going to be as strong as the plate. Um, but the more I do, I'm starting to think that it would have made a lot of sense to basically just cut the rails out back past the strut towers and just weld RHS in from there back because half of today I basically just spent messing around trying to straighten stuff up when I could have just made all new stuff but obviously hindsight's twenty twenty, and I'm kind of a bit too far to do that now so if one day I ever get super bored I might do that but for tonight that'll probably be it <sighs> so today is a new day and first thing I'll be doing is grinding off all this shit um, and then taking a couple of measurements from water pump and the crank to get the motor as centered as I can and then obviously checking it visually as well because the car's not perfect um, and it's not the same side to side but once I've done that um, and taken a couple of measurements from that I can get a square along the front of the heads and um, get my L like my bracket for the motor mounts to actually butt up to um, in more or less the right spot sort of thing all right so now both of those are ground back um, I've made two bits that are gonna be a little bit too long oh that's not them um, they are here there's another one the same here uh, I made two bits, so what I'll do now is I'll get this as close to center as I can, um, get the tape out, and then, like I said, straight edge from here to here, um, and bend these up. I'll work out where I need to sort of kink these sort of thing, so wrong one again, um, but obviously they'll sort of go like this, slice them through there, back, break their back, maybe add something back, probably add something back in there or whatever, um, and... Tuck them in. All right, so visually, it's sitting pretty centered. Um, I've sort of squared off to the rail with a bit of pretty heavy flat um, bar. And because the head's obviously staggered on these, the ones further back, but it's not the end of the world. Um, we had a discussion about this. If I ever put a different motor in it, it's going to be a matter of cutting off this bit of angle I put on and moving it forward, which makes less sense than trying to space it out at the head to do it, which I think it'd look a bit worse anyway. So one there, one there. 
um, I'll mark these bits where I need to cut them. So I've made both these now, and um, I've marked them up against these brackets too, so I roughly know where I need to trim them off. All right, so I've got all these cleaned up, made up. Um, I think the track, the camera's wigging out, but what I did buy as well, wherever they ended up, um, oh, some here. So I've got two plumb bobs, string line for later on, um, but something that will be handy that I've never had that I don't know why I've never had because it probably would have made my life so much easier. Little welding magnets, so I'll use them just to hold these together and just tack these up together. I found the argon bottle. Um, it is next to the other one for the TIG. So I've already turned the TIG on. Hopefully it's set up about right. I'll um, just quickly try and TIG it. It's probably gonna be good practice if nothing else. So I totally forgot how clean shit has to be to TIG it. So um, I got something on there. I ended up just cranking it. But what I'll do is this is the temperature of the sun. I've already melted one of these magnet things. But I'll clean up this backside so I can actually get it nice on here. Um, and I've tacked this one sort of thing. I'll clean this up as well. All right, so I got there in the end. They're pretty ugly, but um, they'll be fine. Because what I'm going to do is grind them off anyway. So I have a nice flat surface. Um, that'll do the job. I just didn't want it to be not complete. We're also at the temperature of the sun. So I'll let them cool down for a minute. All right, so I ground these back. They're not perfect, um, but they'll do the job. Like everything's going to get heaps of high feel and stuff, which is my solution for everything. So uh, I'll work out which side's which again. But there you go. That's basically the gist of it sort of thing. So it'll the motor will go hard up against that, um, and then it'll rest on this flat plate that I've welded on here and then bolt onto this sort of thing. So, All right, so now what I'm gonna do before I do anything else is pull the intake manifold off because the, I pull the intake manifold off and the valve covers off because then I can level it across the top of the heads. I'm pretty sure, Dad was saying before anyway, so I'll trust that. Um, and I'll level the car as well on the hoist by letting the tires down um, with like a level on the roof because I know the roof's gonna be pretty true because I'm gonna to have to get the angle of the motor right before I actually start trimming up these plates so I can get it as close as I can realistically um, and I'd rather do it properly so I'll Quickly pull the intake manifold off, just unbolt it sort of thing, give it all a clean, get it out of the way. The level on the roof, um, two bits of tape, level between the doors or whatever, um, and it's actually down on the other side now. So what I'll do is go to this tire. Um, the hoist is also on all four locks now, which it wasn't before. So I'll go down on this tire um, and I'll get dad to watch the level until it looks pretty well right. Bit more. It's away. I think it looks pretty good. Oh. I think it looks pretty good. Maybe just real. Oh, so your weight on there has moved. Okay, yeah. True. Yeah, your weight even moved it ever so slightly. Um, I mean, what do you think with that? My eyes are shit. I reckon down like a hair. So I took a photo and because I think both our eyes are pretty terrible. That looks pretty, pretty <laughs> well right sort of thing. So at least it's going to be close enough now that we can put a level across the... Oh, fuck. A level across the motor and actually get the motor level too. So we'll get this bit of RHS across the tops of the heads and then there's another little level there. Machine surfaces. That should be pretty right. I can even use the angle gauge. I can use the angle gauge, yeah, so that can go. Don't use that. I don't know that that'll give you a good enough. I think you know the digital one that you were looking at. Yeah. Because this was showing a tiny little bit and I needed to lift that up to get that right. I, I don't know. I'd probably use your digital one. Yeah. So the motor, I think it was I think it was throwing me because um the car was pissed the wrong way anyway. So it's zero it's like half a degree off, um, which is more than acceptable. So now we'll just center the motor side to side, um, measure off here and then shorten the brackets up. So I've got one of the engine plates um bolted up and we've been measuring off the crank. Uh, water pump, whatever, it's about the same. Um, motor's still level. I've taken a fair bit off the other one. Um, I'm not sure where it's actually sitting, but I took I took off as much as I really can because the rails are pretty different side to side. Um, so now the motor measures, I guess, from the head. Oh, sorry, it was from the heads to the one of the control arm bolts. Measures pretty much the same, but I will move it slightly more to the passenger side. Um, it's going to be like two mil and then I'll get it pretty snug on both sides. So rather than keeping, continuing to take off, oh, here. So rather than continuing to take, well, take, oh, fine. it's all gone wrong. Rather than to continuing to take more off this one, which is already really close to that hole, I'll take a bit more off this one and um, it'll be sort of like splitting the difference between the two sort of things so that it doesn't look totally silly, but 
either way, um, I don't actually know how centered three UZs are in these cars. I don't know how it's cars. They're never right anyway. So I'll um, take a bit more off this and finally tack those stupid L brackets on. And you probably notice I've got the I've got a different intake manifold on here, or lack of an intake manifold. This is one I actually cut up for something else, like probably three years ago now. So we cut the whole bunch of bananas off it basically. Um, and it's not perfect, but we'll get this CNC all nicely soon. But I do have some tube sitting around so I can get a rough idea of where the where the plate needs to be for the blower um, and the runner length, and they'll come up and forward and all that sort of thing. But I just sort of wanted to see what it was like with this on here and not a bunch of bananas because um, it's just been looking the same the whole time. I have to change something. Alrighty, so that's a bit of a win. I've got both of them on there. Um, oh, geez, I'm gonna make heaps more noise. Um, only those two bolts, but those two bolts I haven't had to uh, slot out at all. These upper ones are a bit close to the edge anyway, so I will slot them in. Um, that was a little bit different side to side. I mean, obviously the heads weren't different side to side, um, but the where I drilled it, I didn't use a drill press or anything, so that's almost certainly why that's happened. Um, but it's sitting there, um, supporting all the weight of it sort of thing. It is like insane. This isn't attached to anything, but like, you def this is definitely all you need, um, obviously for this sort of thing, not a road going car. Um, to stop the motor moving around, um, Dad was saying we will do a uh, travel limiter as well at some point, um, just in case I jump on the picks real hard and the motor comes trying to fly out the front of the car. But yeah, he did say that these sort of plates were probably overkill and I reckon he's pretty pretty right. Um, not that I doubted him in the first place, but I reckon he's pretty right in saying that because this is solid just sitting there. I've just been sitting there, I'm being super lazy. Because I started thinking about how I'm going to finish these engine plates and um, I'm not sure, I think, and um, how I'm going to paint the motor and obviously then I was like, what am I going to do? So I started looking at motors, but um, let me know what you think. I'm actually not 100% sure. That's obviously just like buzzed to sort of clean it up a bit. Um, it's like 120, I think it is or whatever. Oh, I can, I can zoom in. Ah, there we go. Look at that. So that's like 120. But yeah, I don't actually know how to finish these. My heart tells me to polish them, but polishing shit, obviously. Um, I don't, but I don't want, I want them painted, so I'm not sure if there's any other finishes that I'm not aware of sort of thing. I'll chamfer all the edges and stuff nicely, but... Anyway, I think what I will do from here, um, it's not super late yet, but it is Sunday, so I will... I won't... I'm not too sure. I, I, I'll stop worrying about the engine plates. Um, for all intents and purposes, the engine is mounted now. I need to tack those... L's on, drill a couple holes, and it's good. But I can put them back on, and the motor will sit there happy. It's not going to move. I don't need to worry about it. Um, but I can finish the front end, and I may as well finish the front end. Like, everything's pretty much done. I'm not going to do the bottom yet. I was considering it. Um, I probably can. I might. I probably won't. Um, but what I will do is at least clean up the rest of the radiator support um, and just stop it from rusting more, even though it's a pain in the ass. I'll pull it back off buzz it all back, get some edge primer on it all. Um, if I have to weld anything else to it, it's not the end of the world, I'll just buzz that spot back or just burn the paint away, whatever comes first. Not too sure, so I'll do that now. I had another idea. So um, when I seen the bunch of bananas we already cut up, I and I'd pulled the intake manifold off, I thought, I was like, why not make some runners, I guess, that are gonna be roughly the height um, I want them to be, make a plate, maybe out of MDF or something cobble some stuff together, tape some stuff together. I just want to get a better idea of how it's actually going to look. I pretty much know, but it'd be cool to see it sort of thing. So I just walked down to grab something else and I found a bit of PVC in the bin that I just cut into three equal lengths. Oh, I only chucked the front two on and one at the back to support it. Um, so what I'll do here is, I forget that I'm filming and I can do stuff while I'm doing it. These are pretty similar diameter. They'll be a little bit smaller than this. I might squish them a bit, but sit two on the front, make a plate roughly the width of the blower, um and tape some stuff together sit the blower on there and see how it's actually going to look look at that i even found some chrome paint this is going to look so convincing you know what i'm going to do i'm going to use this as the thumbnail but <laughs> these taped on sit this on top you know this is looking this is looking pretty pretty good and now i'll get um, oh. jesus fucking christ i'll get the blower Sit the blower on here. So obviously that's not 100% what it's gonna look like, but that is probably a little bit high. Um, I can actually go look at Dad's intake manifold because it'll be a really similar design, but 
yeah, obviously the runners won't be quite that big. Um, they'll angle in more than that, obviously. Um, I don't know how much I can adjust this on here without having a spectacular disaster, maybe a bit, but um, something like this. Rookie, I just had a look at Dad Serrano and it's actually the, um, the lack of a complete plenum, like altogether, <laughs> that makes it look funny. So um, I might even just like make a little cardboard thing to make it look like a plenum from the front just so I can visualize, because that's what I'm all about. All right, I'm obviously spending way too much time doing this, um, but I've just made this like little box thing to sort of pretend that there's a plenum on here. But, oh yeah, look at that. That even sort of stays there by itself. So I got that bottom bit on now. I think it looks about right. Um, it's about the right height. It's probably about all where it's gonna live and everything. And I figured while I'm just mocking stuff up and visualizing stuff, I've been trying to think of what I wanna do for the hat for a while now sort of thing. So. Um, it's a lot easier for me to what's the word make stuff in 3d so i've got pretty much infinite card stock um like picture framing cardboard so may as well make a bit of a front profile a bit of a side profile work out roughly how high i want it something that looks proportionally right doesn't look too silly but still pretty tall like this is the profile we've sort of come up with that looks about right um i think and this is the size of the opening <laughs> slightly wider but about this height sort of thing so something like that so I'll uh, make another one of these and then we'll tape the number plate in and get a bit of an idea. <laughs> all right, so in this mess, I've got all the bits that I need to make both sides. I've got both sides, a little front and back bit to give it some structure, then I'll tape it to the blower and then tape the one of the number plates, probably the bigger one, the standard New South Wales size number plate in between it for the butterfly, maybe a little bit wider, not too sure. And then I'll um, basically make it spine with some tape and it'll be sick because what that'll actually do is give me essentially templates to then copy onto like just a bit of cardboard so I can have a full cardboard one and then I can basically have a physical idea, tweak, whatever, and then I can make it all out of wood and have like a like a stack fab thing and then um or just sheet aluminium sort of thing. So cool. I I was super stuck on this but I'm glad I started making it. Alright, so this is all sort of roughly box together taped together. It'll probably make a lot more sense what I mean in a second once I get this number plate in there. Um, I'll hold it up for size. I'm still thinking a little bit wider than this maybe, but that actually looks pretty good. It looks proportionally not too bad. Um, needs to look a little bit cartoony in my opinion. Just straight up gave you the whole shot of that number plate. I'm not sure what it's from. Um, pretty good. The other thing, sorry, that's what I was going to say. Um, so from side on, I think it looks pretty cool, but I did want it to protrude a lot more. And rather than trying to make the actual hat itself bigger, taller, longer, whatever, which I think start looking a bit silly, I'll get um, a blower spacer, hopefully. There's one that'll fit, so good vibrations do one. Um, super expensive, like everything else related to blowers, but I'll get one of them, um, and that'll give me the protrusion and extra height that I'm looking for, because currently it's a bit below the roof line, um, and I want it to be equal or a little bit higher and a little bit further forward. So I'll take this in, and then I'll be back. So I think that's pretty close to the right size. It's starting to look a bit silly. Um, <laughs> it's... I don't know, it could probably be a little bit wider, um, but it was really hard to make a side profile knowing that the front is gonna sort of splay out, fan out like that. Um, oh, actually, why not? The obligatory, open the door, see what it looks like in the car. Oh, get in here. Yeah, sick. <laughs> so, it's not even that bad, really. Like, once it has that um, riser and all the... Oh, actually, once it has all the other shit hanging off it, it'll be pretty offensive. But at the moment, I like it. This is coming together quite nicely. Uh, I've got a pretty cool idea of what I'm going to do for the butterflies, maybe. Um, and it'll be... I don't think I've ever seen anything else with it. So keep going with this. You know how I can tell I've done heaps of visualizing today? I've got, fuck, all of these left. So... But look at that. Look how silly that is. Look at that. I reckon that's about right. Um, I don't mind it. I've taped everything up. So I should stick the front bumper on it and headlights and take a photo. I am thinking. It's probably going to be super zoomed into my face. Yeah, it is. But I might do that. So I've got my other bar sitting on the front of it. The one that will actually be on the car. And um, obviously it's for a wider front. But look at that. How sick is that? I think I'm gonna leave the factory grill in it and not put the other one in it, just so it's obviously a Toyota. Um, I have to put some, I have to put the bits that I've cut out for the turbos back in the openings and stuff, but I think that's pretty sick.
kind of seen it all together. Headlights are super cloudy and all that sort of thing, but look at that. Also, the front bumper on Majestus is disgusting factory, so yeah, that's why it needs this. It's hard to visualize how good it's going to look <laughs> with a factory bumper on it, but I'm procrastinating so much, so I don't know how much more I'll do today. I'll um, update you if I do anything. What I will do quickly for no apparent reason um, is I'll rattle can this black so I can take a photo and show everybody and tell everybody that that's my car. My poor little um, DJI camera thing is having a heart attack. I just started it and the fucking gimbal went mental, but... Um, Dad had some stuff laying around, so we've been visualizing some things, talking about what we're going to do with the injector hat, um, as far as the lines and stuff go. But look, all things considered, I think this is pretty sick. This is it with the front end and stuff on it. Um, I'm not going to do any more tonight. I've just done heaps of sitting around and talking and whatever. I also got um, this catalog from Dad, so I know Aeroflow stuff's expensive, but I feel like I'm about to get a pretty rude shock. Uh, anyway, if you like the video, obviously, leave a like. Let me know what I can improve. See ya.